You're sitting outside a small cafe, looking out onto a village harbour. Just across the road is the low harbour wall. You can see masts of all shapes and sizes from boats moored on the other side. Ropes come up, tied to great rusty iron rings or old metal ladders that lead over into the water. It's a sunny morning in early summer. There's a light breeze blowing in from the sea. It's a perfect day for a walk around the coast. You finish your tea, get up and cross the road to stand just behind the sea wall and look around. To your left, the back of the harbour ends in a slope of old concrete and mud, strewn with cables and floats, running up to the main part of the village. Looking straight across to the other side, there are more fishing trawlers and sailing boats tied up, gently rolling in the water. Behind them, the buildings, cottages and shops seem tightly packed together, in ascending rows as the land climbs away to the cliffs in the background. There's a church at the right-hand edge, heavily built against sea storms, where the harbour road disappears around a point of high rocks. You turn left and start to walk to the back of the harbour. Along the sea wall, there are jumbles of fishing net lobster pots, old coils of ropes. You pass small wooden warehouse buildings and rusty old winch machines before turning along the main front of the village. Here, there's the old lifeboat station and the fisherman's pub, the Blue Anchor. You walk past the open door. There are shops and small streets leading off. There are old wooden fishing boats moving gently, ropes straining against the tide. At the start of the wall on the other side of the harbour, there's a bench seat next to an old wartime mine on display. Out in the water, you can see a fisherman rowing a small dinghy across to his boat. Beyond, you can look out to the open sea. You sit down on the bench and relax for a while. You start to walk on down the far side of the harbour. You pass more small shops and cottages. 
interspersed between them are rocky outcrops leading up to the hills behind. Ahead, you can see the church, built just under a great point of cliff rocks, where the road winds around and out of sight. It has great thick stone walls, with a short, solid bell tower, built to withstand the waves in the winter. As you reach the church, the vicar locks the big oak door on his way out and walks back up towards the village. You look one last time across the harbour and out to sea. There's a trawler just coming in, with seagulls wheeling around its catch piled on the deck. You turn around the point. The sea breeze blows in your face as you look along the bay, winding on into the distance, as far as you can see. As it turns the corner, the village harbour road leads into a more simple path along the beach, just below high cliff rocks on its left. There's a salty smell in the air, which is filled with spray. You wander along the path, straying down onto the shingle beach. There are rock pools everywhere, filled with shellfish from high tide. Driftwood and seaweed are strewn along the edge of the waves. You walk up to the water's edge and enjoy the feeling as waves break over your feet. The water is warm and frothy as it breaks on the shingle. Further along, the waves reach almost to the cliff wall. You clamber over low boulders, carefully treading on slabs covered with slippery seaweed. You see a cave entrance, about five feet high, with waves sloshing in and out of a small channel in the rocks. Carefully, you step inside. At the back of the cave, there's a dry, flat sand floor. There are rocks lying all around the walls, and between them, you can just make out what might be very old remnants of wooden boxes and storage chests, rotting and broken. Perhaps this was a smuggler's cave hundreds of years ago. The tide is rising, so you clamber back out and walk up the beach.
The rocks at the back of the beach slope up much more gently now. They mix with grass and heather as they climb up to the high hills behind. You reach a sandy path leading up away from the beach. The path leads into steps that wind into the hill. Climbed up to the top of the cliffs, the fresh sea breeze hits your face again. You look out to the horizon, squinting as the sun reflects on the water. There's a haze in the distance. For a while, you sit down on the grass, breathe in the salty air, and let the wind brush around you. Above, dark clouds are crossing the sky, coming in from the sea. Behind you, the ground slopes down into some fields, with long grass waving in the breeze. The path winds through to some woods in the distance. There may be a shower of rain, so you head down into the fields towards shelter. Ahead, there's a stile where the path goes into the trees. This is a small wood, light and spacious. Through the tree branches, you see the sky darkening overhead. You walk under a large beech tree to shelter from the rain. The first drops are just starting to fall. You sit down on the roots at the foot of the tree and watch raindrops bounce off leaves and undergrowth.
The rain is stopping at last. You turn back out into the field again and walk up towards the top of the cliffs. cliff edge. The ground is covered in grass and heather. There's a path following the cliff edge in both directions. Out at sea, there is a ship approaching the harbour. To your left, the path rolls away downwards, and in the distance, you can see a lighthouse perched on the top of the cliff, with a flock of birds just visible, wheeling in circles above the tower. You start down towards it. You've walked down along the cliff tops almost to the lighthouse. The path runs alongside the stone wall which surrounds the lighthouse grounds. As you pass on the seaward side, you look up at the tower, which looms straight above you, tall and painted white, with a metal spiral staircase running up around the outside to a high door. A flock of seagulls perches on the great glass lantern at the top and they fly off, wheeling around it as you approach. At the far side of the lighthouse, the path runs steeply down into a secluded cove. Carefully, you clamber over the edge and pick your way down, holding on to rock outcrops and stubby branches of gorse and shrubs. After a while, the climb is easier and you slide on sand and stones. At last, you've reached the cove. It's a horseshoe shape, cut out of the cliffs. The beach is sheltered from the wind. The sand is smooth and powdery. It feels hot on your feet as you walk down towards the sea. You sit down for a while and enjoy the warm sun.
you walk closer to the sea, stopping about ten yards from the waves. There are a few pieces of driftwood and bric-a-brac from passing ships. You sit on a small dune in the sand and look out towards the horizon. The sun has moved round to the west, not quite yet behind the cliff edge. It's warm on your face. There's a soft breeze. You look out over the waves and can just see, very faintly, the outline of cliffs in the far distance. You relax, close your eyes and lie back on the sand. <laughs> 